thank you everyone so much for coming out. I know um, we've braved um, winds and rain and locusts to get here tonight. Um, because it's been, it's been, there's quite a scene out there and it's, it's quite difficult with the weather. But thank you everyone for coming. My name is uh, Nabil Sufter. I'm on the board of ISB, um, a very poor substitute for Sumeya, uh, who due to a family emergency couldn't be here tonight. Uh, but wanted to welcome everyone. I want to start with uh, saying a, a, a brief a prayer. Rabbi Shah Sadri, wa li Amri, wa lul lasani, koli. This is the prayer that Moses said when he knew he was going to have to speak with Pharaoh in, in, to Pharaoh directly and try to convince him of something. He says, my Lord, open up my, my chest, my heart, and make my task easy for me and remove the knot from my tongue so they may understand my speech. I guarantee you he was not being invited for an iftar dinner. <laughs> um, it's wonderful to see everybody out here. You know, the first iftar in the United States that we know of was December 9th, 1805. Thomas Jefferson had an iftar dinner for an envoy um, from Tunisia. There was an iftar dinner for a, for a party of one. This tradition was rekindled in the White House again during the Clinton administration, then the Bush administration, and the Obama administration. And now, we're excited to be at the forefront of cities around the country to be one of the very few cities to have a tradition, inshallah, of, a, of an iftar dinner every year in Ramadan. It's very exciting. And we want to thank you all for coming. <clears throat> I just want to point out briefly, and I'll, then I'll get out of the way, it's a beautiful room, all different kinds of faces, all different ages. The men look a lot older than the women, I must say. <laughs> um, and um, people from all different backgrounds, people from all different faith traditions, um, Sunni, Shia, Jewish, Christian, Hindu, you name it. This is really what Atlanta is about. This is what makes ISB Atlanta proud to be of Atlanta, from Atlanta, for Atlanta. Yeah. I won't bore you any further, but I would like to ask Hassan Fay and Abir Saberi to come to the podium to recite a little bit of Quran. Abir Saberi is an honors graduate from Walton Comprehensive High School. And where she founded the Muslim Student Association, she'll be attending Georgia State in the fall as a business administration major. Hassan Fay came from Gambia to the United States 17 years ago. Uh, he memorized the Quran at age 13. At age 13, I was trying to memorize like PlayStation or something like that. And he came, uh, and since then, he's done his undergrad in psychology and is pursuing a master's in youth, co youth counseling. He's taught the Holy Quran for 22 graduates and has 22 current students under his tutelage. Hassan and Abir, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-lazina min qablikum kama kutiba ala al-lazina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun ayyaman ma'adudat faman kana minkum مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام الأخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين ومن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون 
شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العظيم O oh, you who have attained to faith, fasting is ordained for you as it was ordained for those before you, so that you might remain conscious of God fasting during a certain number of days. But whoever of you is ill or in a journey shall fast instead of for the same number of other days, and in such cases it is incumbent upon those who can afford it to make sacrifices by feeding a needy person. It was the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was first bestowed from on high as a guidance unto man, as a self-evident proof of that guidance, and as the standard by which to discern the truth from the false. Hence, whoever of you lives to see this month shall fast throughout it, but that he that is ill or on a journey shall fast instead for the same number of other days. God wills that you shall have ease and does not will you to suffer hardship, but he does desire you to complete the number of days and that you extol God for his having guided you aright and that you render your thanks unto him. And if my servant asks thee about me, behold, I am near. I respond to the call of him or her who calls whenever he or she calls unto me. Let them then respond unto me and believe in me so that they may follow the right path. Hassan Abir, thank you so much. With that, I'd like to introduce uh, the man who needs no introduction the mayor, our mayor, a mayor who has made his commitment to be inclusive to everyone known, not only through words, but through actions. A mayor who deserved and received the Courage Award from ISB Atlanta in 2016 because of his brave stance about ensuring that Atlanta is and will remain a welcoming city for refugees, immigrants, Muslims and people from all backgrounds, no matter whether their family came here hundreds of years ago or just arrived. Mayor Kasim Reed. Good evening. Take a point of personal privilege. I believe our state's uh, former attorney general, Sam Olins, is in the room. Sam, please stand up. Please give him a warm round of applause. Good and honorable public servant. Uh, on behalf of the city of Atlanta, uh, I want to welcome here tonight as we join with our Muslim brothers and sisters for this very special iftar dinner. I want to thank and recognize Dr. Nabil Safdar and the Islamic Speakers Bureau for really organizing this occasion. And I know everybody in this room knows that uh, we have a pretty big election going on. <laughs> um, but what I said uh, when folks asked me about my schedule today was, uh, I think being at this dinner is exactly what's needed in our elections. The folks that believe <laughs> all people value and that everyone counts. I want to uh, express my appreciation to Duria Faruqi, who served as the Chief Operating Officer for the City of Atlanta. Duria, stand up, let everybody see you. She was my Chief Operating Officer, going on to bigger and better things, but I remember when she was a, a baby. I also want to express uh, my condolences to Samaya Khalifa and her family on the recent loss of her dad. Samaya cannot be with us tonight, but her son, Dr. Youssef Khalifa, is here. 
and I want him to know how much the city of Atlanta appreciates and values the work that his mother and his family does with the Islamic Speakers Bureau. I also, I'm in a good mood. I also want to recognize my friend Imam Pleman Alameen for being here tonight. Please give him a round of applause. He is always there, always present, always working, always with an extended hand and an open ear. I want to thank you for your leadership and your guidance and for everything you do for our capital city. Atlanta is and will always be a welcoming city for people of all faiths and backgrounds. Our diversity is our strongest asset, and we're honored to be sharing this inaugural celebration with you tonight. More than 100,000 American Muslims live and work in metropolitan Atlanta, and there are more than 80 mosques throughout the state of Georgia. Numbers like that speak to the fact that Muslims make important contributions every day in all walks of American life, especially in the fields of health and education. There are an estimated 20,000 Muslim physicians in the United States of America. As mayor of this city, I believe that it is essential that Atlantans of all religious backgrounds get to know their Muslim neighbors. The divisive times we live in call on us to seek a deeper understanding of all of our residents. Only by broadening our interfaith relationships can we come to a greater collective of appreciation of our rich and multifaceted culture. I also happen to believe that it makes life more interesting when you get to know someone who doesn't live a life that's exactly like your own. Only by building on our shared experiences can we overcome the stereotyping, the otherness, and the hate that lead to tragic events such as those in Virginia and in London in recent days that take the lives of innocent people. Atlanta is proud of its legacy as the cradle of the civil rights movement in America. And I feel that tonight is an appropriate extension of that legacy. We know firsthand that that kind of social progress that we achieve when we work together, work through our differences, and transcend the primitive barriers of segregation and division. We've seen the kind of business success and economic opportunity we can achieve when we ensure that Atlanta is a city for everyone. I am frequently invited all over the United States of America and to many parts of the world to talk about what makes Atlanta different. And I can really sum it up with a very quick story. There is absolutely no reason in the world today that the city of Birmingham should not be the economic center of the southeastern region of the United States. But around 1957, 58, 59, and 60, they had two men leading them, one named Governor Wallace and one named Bull Connor. At the exact same time, we had a mayor named Ivan Allen, we had a governor named Carl Sanders, who, although they were imperfect, believed that Atlanta and Georgia was better off having a big, bold, welcoming, inclusive version of itself. At that time, the groups that we were discussing were white people and black people. If you fast forward just 30 years, just 35 years from those dates, because leaders at that time made a different decision, the metropolitan Atlanta GDP is three times the size of that of Birmingham, Alabama today. So what's my point? My point is not only is it the right thing to do to be open to be welcoming and to be embracing. It's better for your own selfish interests and it's better for the future of your families. So Ramadan reminds me of a wonderful time to revitalize our connection and rekindle our compassion to one another. Because all of us, no matter how good our hearts are, have to work hard to make sure that we never get compassion fatigue. If we don't get tired of caring about our other neighbors or hearing about what fears they may have. Tonight is a time when Muslim families and communities pull together 
celebrate their faith in a profound and peaceful way. Indeed, I believe that you can actually feel this spirit in this room tonight. I come into this council chambers many, many times. And I can tell you without fear of contradiction, it doesn't feel like it feels right now. <laughs> right now is a spiritual season when people reflect on God's message and renew their sense of purpose. It's a time when followers of Islam reinforce their new commitment to charity by helping others around the world who are burdened by poverty, disease, conflict and hunger. Muslims honor the blessings of each day during Ramadan by fasting with humble endurance. Their daily perseverance is rewarded each night when they break their fast in gratitude and in prayer. Any person of faith can recognize the fruit of such character building practice. When we allow ourselves the time to meditate on our personal salvation and advancing the greater good, caring about other people. The city of Atlanta is fortunate to have such an active and embracing Muslim community as we have. We take extraordinary pride in honoring your contributions and your traditions tonight. Freedom of worship, in my, in my belief, is a constitutional pillar of the United States. Our respect for the free exercise of religion goes back to the beginnings of our country. President Thomas Jefferson, as was earlier noted, hosting an iftar dinner at the White House in 1805. So in our own way, we are continuing an extraordinary tradition. And we certainly need to be doing it right now with the president that we have. This freedom, y'all don't have to clap, but I'm clapping in some. Appreciate y'all politeness. Still has not commented on a single event that has impacted Muslim people adversely in America or in other parts in the world, and it is not right. It's not right. <laughs> this freedom reminds us of the national value shared by all law-abiding Americans. It brings out the best in all of us. It is my hope that tonight's dinner signifies a deeper and higher level of understanding of our Muslim community. But I don't want it to stop here. I want us to continue to talk, continue to chat, get comfortable knowing one another. And the next time we have this dinner, when I'm no longer mayor, I look forward to coming back as just a guest. And the next time I come back, the room is going to be overflowing into the hallways because of all this. In the city of Atlanta, uh, as its mayor, uh, the highest award that the city council uh, has allowed me to bestow on any individual or organization is an award called the Phoenix Award. Phoenix is the symbol of the city of Atlanta because we are the only American city that was burned entirely to the ground and literally had to start all over. And so tonight, it is my high honor to present the Phoenix Award to Dr. Suma, to Sumaya Khalifa's son, Dr. Youssef Khalifa. Is he in the room tonight? <laughs> this Phoenix Award. This Phoenix Award reads in part, I am delighted to recognize and honor a visionary leader whose wisdom and contributions continue to have great influence and impact in our local community and our world. A pillar in our city, Sumaya is committed to educating the public on the Islamic culture and successfully launched the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta in August of 2001. The organization is active in the community and its members have presented to thousands of residents and visitors in Atlanta about Islam and Muslims to create a more inclusive and diverse city that welcomes and celebrates the contributions of all. 
often praised for her outstanding service. Sumaya has been honored with the Community Leadership Award of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and has served as a citizen diplomat for the U.S. State Department. Her efforts will continue to encourage Muslims throughout the country to live with integrity, pride, and courage. On behalf of the city of Atlanta, I salute her for her outstanding leadership, for being an exemplar, and for the contribution she has made to our great city. Youssef, thank you for being here today. So one other thing before uh, Brother Faye gives us their Dan, uh, you have dates on your table so you can break your fast now. We're in the, and, uh, but we don't want to do one other thing. Uh, on behalf of the Islamic Speakers Bureau, we'd like to recognize uh, the outstanding work once again of our mayor, who has uh, given us eight wonderful years, seven and a half, going on eight wonderful years. <laughs> and has always stood up for justice and, and dignity and spreading it out to all the citizens and, and anybody who wants to be good and decent, he's always been there for them. So on behalf of the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta with the inaugural IFTA, uh, we present to the city of Atlanta and to our mayor, Kasim Reed, the 2017 award for dignity and justice and we congratulate you and thank you sincerely. So we have the then we have a uh, prayer area set up outside um, in the hallway to the right. Uh, those who are making the prayer will go right out. Uh, our guests and those who may not be praying, we want you to start eating while we're out. So that, that, was, that was short in the line. So while we're out, don't feel bad at all. Start eating and we'll join you shortly. <laughs> Hayya ala al-falaq 